This is Mike with AskTractorMike.com, and I, um, we have a problem in agriculture in the U.S. right now with pollinators. And I'm speaking at the University of Missouri Southwest Center Field Day with Andy Thomas. And Andy, what's your title? I'm actually a research assistant professor. And you're talking today to folks in attendance at this field day about pollinators. Tell us about our problem. Well, uh, the majority of our foods probably the majority are produced, they have to be pollinated by insects. Uh, not all of our food, but a lot of them. And the honeybees have really declined in the last several years. There's a lot of problems with honeybees. But we have native pollinators that are actually more efficient than honeybees, but they have to have habitat. Uh, if you have a mowed lawn like this, they just have nowhere to, to eat, or to forage, to nest. Um, so we need pollinators to so we can eat. Um, and this is just an example back here of just a little patch, a pollinator patch, about three quarter of an acre where they can live, hopefully, and then help us grow food. My audience generally is, are people that have had jobs in town, they move out to the country, they buy 20 acres, 30 acres, and, and the tendency on that crowd a lot of times is to slick it off and make it look really nice. A lot of people are buying finished mowers to mow their pasture, that's not good for the wildlife. Well, there's nowhere for the, there's, there's nothing for them to eat, there's no habitat. It looks nice, I agree, but if you, if you want a little bit of nature, you can, I don't, I don't encourage people just to let it go to weeds. This is an intentional planting. Um, in some areas, if there is native vegetation, you can kind of let it go and see what's there, but you don't want to just grow ragweed and poison ivy and stuff. But, um, so this is just an example of about a three quarter acre where we intentionally kind of planted native plants that are, uh, uh, grow on prairies. It's done really, really well. It's very easy to maintain. Uh, it's, it's great. You hear varying uh, results from people that try to raise native plants. A lot of times native plants will spring up on their own, but if you're trying to raise them, sometimes that can be a little tricky. How did you establish this plot? Well, this is the easiest way to do it for, for this kind of thing. It's different if you're trying to have a garden or a landscaping. This is just a kind of a wild planting. We literally, uh, I spent a summer where I sprayed out the grass. So we round up to about three times to kill the Bermuda grass and fescue that was here. And then in the winter, uh, this one it was the day before snow was predicted. We had all our seeds ready. We just threw the seeds out on top of the ground with no other preparation. It snowed. And as the snow melted, it kind of nestled the seeds in, and it just was perfect. And then we did, we didn't have a lot of grass come in, so we did throw some grass seed out again to try to beef up the grass a little bit better. Um, and, and it, you know, there's a few weeds the first couple years. The first few years, the black-eyed Susans really, really grow, and they're beautiful. And then they kind of eventually die down, and the more permanent stuff kind of comes in and really takes hold. So this is about eight, nine years old, and it's... It's kind of achieved a balance, I would say, and we, I still may want to try to put more diverse species in here, but it's, it's doing great. It's mostly wildflowers. I don't see really, there's maybe a few weeds in there, but mostly uh, it, now, it, are you tending this on a regular basis or is it do its own thing? It needs very little maintenance. There, there was a mulberry tree that I sprayed the other day. Birds do bring in some weeds, but it's actually so vigorous that not a lot of weeds can get a <coughs> excuse me can get a hold here um, there's a little ragweed but ragweed's okay wildlife like it um, a little bit of poison ivy birds brought in and there's a, there's a little bit of sumac and pokeweed which I don't mind I don't want those to get out of control uh, we burn it or brush hog it once a year in the winter and that pretty well is all we have to do so I do kind of just watch for any weeds you kind of learn ragweed. I don't. It's not going to hurt anything. Uh, cherry trees, small berries. You want to kind of keep out. So, how big an impact will this little patch here? And and what I want to tell my folks is, if you've got a place on your farm, on your acreage, uh, that you could spare for this type of thing, uh, how big a difference will this make to the pollination of apples and pumpkins and everything else that we grow? Well, I don't know, but I, I would think this would have enough pollinators easily for, a, you know, a small backyard orchard and pumpkins and apples. There, there's a lot of bees in there. It attracts all different species of bees. Um, 
I don't have a real good answer. I mean, but I, th I think it would make an impact. If you walk through the path you've cut, you see bees everywhere. Okay. So that's got to be a good thing. Good, great. Yeah, and then this time of year, they're really busy. So yeah, they're, it's a great little just paradise for insects and bees and dragonflies. Birds are in here. It's just amazing. And if I wanted help on my acreage establishing something like this, a, a university? Yes, I mean, the university is pretty lean these days, but yes, uh, call me. Also, the Missouri Prairie Foundation would be a good one to contact. Um, and also some seed companies, Hamilton uh, Seed Company, Missouri Wildflowers Nursery, specialize in putting together seed packages for this kind of thing. And I really, they're great folks, I'd really support them. Um, and they have, they would be probably better. They would know how much seed you need per acre or per half acre in the right seed mix. They are trying to sell you seeds, but my experience with the native people, they, they're also really wanting this to be more prevalent in the state. There's a little bit of an idealistic side to them. They're not just trying to load you up with seed. Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, they're, they're good folks. And there's other businesses as well, but those are kind of the main two. Um, and but yeah, give me a call at university. Uh, you can people are welcome to come out here anytime, and it changes every week. Something different is blooming, and it just has an amazing personality. Um, so well, folks are welcome to come out. Alrighty, thank you. I survive on web traffic. I'd be honored if you'd subscribe to my YouTube channel and like my Facebook page and share this video with other tractor and wildlife enthusiasts. And if you have questions or comments, put them below. We'll try to answer them. Thanks for watching. <laughs>